Okay, now we're recording. See, doesn't it feel different? Doesn't yeah. it? It's, <laughs> totally. Uh, Mario, thank you for taking the time. Uh, I know, again, I know it's early where you are. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate it. Um, thank, thank you, JJ. Yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's dive in and talk about live at Giant Rock. Um, can you kind of give me, I guess to start off, give me the, the background where the idea came from. Was it all Ryan Jones putting it together or uh, how you guys wound up uh, out there doing that thing? I know, obviously, you know, the, the generator parties and all that and, and yeah. that kind of stuff. But uh, was there something about that location specifically? Um, well, it's a, yeah, a couple different answers to that. The, the, the idea to capture that band playing um, a set of music in the desert has, has uh, we, we've been pondering that for many years. Um, my cousin used to film he used to document some of the desert parties and stuff back in the eighties and, you know, uh, old video camera and, and, um, I've seen some of those videos. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, and it was always at night. You couldn't tell where you were. And, right. and a lot of the times you're in pretty cool places like Edom Hill up here is, it's not, it's not a, as magical and scenic as, uh, as giant rock, but, um, and then the nude bull, of course, uh, Many people have heard of that through its folklore of skateboarding and, and the generator parties and stuff. And um, but you know we we started we started to think about the idea years ago, but just tossing it around. Uh, one thing we never I don't know why, but um, Yawning Man or any of the bands I've ever really been in, involved with have ever. Uh, gotten into the idea of making videos. Uh, Fatso Jetson made one video years ago, uh, and it was this like weird co abstract conceptual thing with all this, you know, trying to tell this weird story. And but um, one, you know, when we were kids, meaning like in our early twenties, like late teens, early twenties, we we saw that uh, live at Pompeii. And this was after we were doing some of the generator parties and stuff. And it just kind of like the, the, the thing clicked like, wow, you know, this is, um, we kind of have our own ruins and, and uh, mesas that we go out and, and make music in. And, but uh, we never really uh, had the ability to put the idea together seriously until a few years ago, uh, I revisited the idea with um, with Gary uh, when we were working with Jason Pine on the um, uh, Desert Age movie. I was helping him, you know, uh, with locations and um, with content, like some archival footage and stuff. And, and at the same time, you know, we were thinking about a concept of going out to different locations, uh, like picking five pieces of music, five jams, and going out to different locations. So one jam would be at the Nude Bowl, one jam would be up in the high desert, one jam would be at Iron Door. Um, Iron Door is where people would know it from Caius's uh, uh, gr Green Machine video, I think it is, um, where they're kind of playing out on this road that leads out in the middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's a spot where we used to throw parties. And so the idea was there and we talked about it with him. Uh, again, kind of, this was even, I mean, the, the technology of, of filming with cell phones, editing at home with, you know, these uh, software programs um, that are available to anybody that has the wherewithal and time to kind of learn them, you know. Um, that stuff existed, but we, we just weren't really aware of it. Um, so it became an expensive, daunting task to like 
do this thing, how many camera angles, and then we got to edit the footage, we got to hire camera guys. And it was just, it, it just always became too much to, uh, to grasp and um, let it go. But I've been pondering and pondering and pondering how to accomplish it. And then um, it was weird because I, I got really fired up to actually do it. Uh, we were kind of in between making a record. We just released Macedonia Lines uh, about, you know, nine months a year prior. And uh, we were thinking of a new project and, and this, this, you know, capturing us in the desert thing came up again in my head. And then Gary said, we were talking about it. And, uh, you know, we were, we were preparing for a tour, for a tour with, uh, we, we were actually in the middle of preparing for Stone and Dusted. Um, we were going to play Mo Monolith on the Mesa. We were going to do a short tour up the coast with uh, some heavy sight sound fest type gigs all the way up to San Francisco. So we had some stuff lined up that was, you know, coming right up and, uh, and, uh, and then COVID, uh, COVID lockdown hit. We had just gotten home from, from Australia where that was, <clears throat> that was where it first started to rear its head on that tour. We, we actually got a little bit scared that we were going to uh, get trapped there between the fires and the, and yeah. the COVID breakout. Yeah. Um, but anyway, we, you know, that was in January and February. And, and of course, in March is when everything got nutty around here. Um, and almost immediately, it was weird. I almost immediately started um, thinking like, what can we do? We're so used to diversity of, you know, we grew up with the diversity of like, um, kind of the skateboarders uh, ethic of, of, you know, I'm gonna find a place to do what I love to do and make it really fun and, and rad. And so it was never like, oh, there's no place to do stuff. I guess I won't do it. You know, we, we just, so the, I'm tackling the adversity of, of, of this COVID thing with no venues, no tours, no, well, um, where we live and what we grew up doing, it was really kind of a natural thing for us to go, oh, well, let's shift our time and our energy into this. And then um, coincidentally at the same time, uh, Ryan, you know, and and I and uh, and Brant were talking about how to do some sort of alternative uh, event for um, the Stoned and Dusted weekend that was postponed. You yeah. know, and do something groovy for all our all our uh, supporters and people that bought tickets and people travel from all over to come to that little festival. It's amazing. I mean, all over Europe, all over from Australia to Eastern Europe to you wouldn't believe it. It's just pretty incredible. But um, so we felt like a responsibility to deliver something. And also, you know, we're all sitting around. We wanted to keep that all that work energy flowing and just keep it going. And shutting down all that momentum is really is difficult, you know. So it was like shift into something different. And originally they were like yeah maybe you could come up and you guys could jam with Brandt or do something at Brandt studio and Joshua Tree and and which would have been groovy um but I thought wait maybe this is the opportunity to like get this footage um and make it part of the couch lock and rock thing well it just the way it came about was so serendipitous and and everything was so casual and flowing there were a little bit of issues with with um we were pushed to a deadline that was um a little bit tight uh for the band to be prepared and mm -hmm. we were worried about that like we're going to make this grand effort to go out there and and at the time we were thinking well we want to we want to perform like a new album you know uh which means you know rehearsal and 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 you know crunching stuff together and writing an album yeah yeah, yeah um, <laughs> which is you know easy for us i mean um we because we work intuitively so much and improvisation is such a big part of how we uh operate as a band creatively uh it's a it, it, anyway we uh 
we finally just said, okay, fuck it, let's do this on this day. And um, we, you know, we showed up. Uh, Ryan helped coordinate some aspects of it. And I, uh, he, he scouted some locations. I scouted some locations. Gary scouted some locations. And ultimately, um, we decided on Giant Rock. And I'm so glad we did because um, it, you know, it really is a, a, a really special, unique, magical place. It's, it's incredible. And, uh, but we were looking at other like places actually on the, on the verge of uh, the um, Joshua Tree National Park, uh, which is equally as amazing, but kind of a different energy and a different scene. Uh, and then we were, you know, we, me and Gary took some hikes and found some pretty remote spots that were um, that same kind of high desert area, but uh, a little bit diffi difficult to access. The Giant Rock is like a lot of off-roading, a lot of mountain or rock climbing, a lot of people just seeking out. Uh, they go to the Integratron, which is nearby, which was actually built um, because of that energy in that area. It's kind of like this crazy vortex going on over there. So, uh, and if you, you know, if you never heard of the Integratron, I highly recommend look it up, um, Google it. Um, and there's a couple great movies about Giant Rock out there, uh, documentaries about it, actually. Um, one's called uh, Calling All Earthlings. And uh, it's neat because they the, the interview uh, some high desert musicians and actually use some music from the Earthlings, which is a, a band that uh, some of your uh, listeners or viewers might uh, recognize from Rancho de la Luna and all that uh, history there. Uh, so yeah, that's a, that's a great introduction to how incredible this spot is, you know? So anyway, that's, you know, we, we collaborated on that and, and, and Ryan, had scouted a nice view of it. And we just, you know, we showed up there at, uh, at six in the morning and um, that whole thing was shot between six and 11 a.m. and noon, the wind started picking up and, uh, you know, wind's really bad for live recording. So we, we just had to get out. But um, it just, the way it unfolded was just perfectly, you know, so. Anyway, that's the long story. <laughs> no, that's awesome. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, you know, obviously there's, there's kind of the nod to the, the generator parties, uh, things like that, that sort of desert legacy thing. Uh, at the very beginning of the, of the movie or the, the video, the film, I don't know. At the very beginning, you pull the generator, first pull and it starts. Now, I have a generator with a pull start, and I have never succeeded in getting it first time. Was that, was that actually one pull on that generator and it started, or was it edited? Oh, no. Well, by then, I had started it probably five times. I think the first time, the first time when we, you know, I, we had to set up uh, and sound check and test uh, so yeah, that shot was actually the first pull before the performance, okay. which I thought about later. I was like, you know, we could have just filmed this part and then edited it in later, you know. And, yeah. Um, but no, I mean, the first the first pull of the day at six a.m. took a couple, you know, <laughs> I had prime it and go. But I get it. Yeah, I've had. Um, there's nothing like showing up to um, a generator get together where you've invited a bunch of friends and a couple bands and uh that generator doesn't want to start i mean i've you know had pull spark plugs and and run down to the shell station on i-10 you know 30 yeah. minutes away from wherever we were to try and figure out what the fuck but um yeah it was it was the first pull and that's a well-maintained unit too by the way which is not c quite contrary to how ours was back in the Right. You know, our equipment would come home completely full of dirt, the generator completely full of dust and dirt. And, uh, and we weren't, you know, hitting the shop vac immediately. They would sit in the rehearsal space and that shit on it till the next time we, we needed it, you know. 
What, um, you know, all, all this, this filming is happening after, you know, obviously kind of the onset of COVID, even being outdoors, what was involved, <clears throat> excuse me, what was involved precaution wise in terms of, of uh, you know, just, just general safety, social, you know, obviously you guys in the band are kind of in a, in a pod together uh, exposure wise, but in terms of, of filming crew and things like that, what was, were there extra steps taken because of the pandemic? Um, yes, yes, very subtle. I mean, there was only probably eight of us. I think there was eight of us out there. Um, and we, you know, we were wearing masks uh, when we weren't jamming. We, you know, we had our masks on or around our neck or on us, you know. And um, at that time, it was, that was May 18th. So it was like, you know, just about um, a month and a half into where it was, wow, this is serious, you know, and uh, things are getting shut down pretty seriously around here in Southern California. So, you know, we were, I mean, we were out in the middle of the desert. So it was, but like loading the van up over Gary's and, and we, it was, you know, we, we were tripping on it and, and being careful. Um, there was, it was, it, it was the first time I had gotten together with, actually, no, the first time was a, was a jam maybe a week before that we did to, to, to just warm up a little bit. And, um, but I noticed immediately how even getting together with, you know, five to 10 people, how complacent um, everyone can get immediately just kind of forgetting what's, and especially if you're out, literally out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, it would, it felt really safe. I mean, we were, you know, we were, we were so remote. It felt really safe. And, and we were like, you know, there was no hugs and there was like the elbow bump and that kind yeah. of stuff. Where we really dropped our guard was when we did the couch lock thing. Mm -hmm. um, we were all packed together, like on a couch, and and dudes I hadn't seen, like Nick stopped by, and and I, you know, there was like ten people there, and I hadn't seen. And after that, and, and me and Wheeler were there, and Gary was there, and his babies, and and after I was like, wow, we probably should have been, uh, you know, being a little more careful. But and, and there's only been a couple times since this whole thing started that, like, you know. Um, between the the bit of work outside of the house that I've had and and going to the store and doing stuff like that, but um, we and I went to one socially distant uh, drive-in concert up here. Uh, it was actually in jo Joshua Tree or Yucca Valley, where uh, you 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 know watch watch a performance from your car. Um, but we you know we've been just been really you know toeing the line with this thing yeah um and it, it's weird how it like kind of naturally made sense with the covid response the the thing that a lot of musicians and artists are doing with this live streaming of of shows making this visual performance and um so it kind of made sense even though the idea was you know, when the idea started out, really, there was no thought of it, any kind of a pandemic, of course, you know, so but it's weird how it kind of fit in and made sense. It's got to be kind of a strange feeling, though, to go from touring on the literal other side of the planet to lockdown, right? I mean, Australia, New Zealand, you're, you're, you're as far away as you can get, right? And then yeah i you know with the and on on uh facebook you know everybody has their memories pop up you know sure and the last couple of years yawning man really like you guys have hit it yeah we we just been going like every opportunity as long as possible we did uh we did a tour uh, a year ago um well a little more than a year ago and it was the, it was the longest I mean, it was like eight and a half weeks uh which is you know 
at one time, like one shot. Yeah. It was a long, it was a long tour. And it was the longest tour that our booking agent in, in, uh, in Europe had ever put together. And so I have a lot of memories popping up, you know, Oh yeah, I was here. I was there. I was out and, you know, just hanging with people and, and in some little dungeon here, some outdoor festival there. Uh, and, wow. I, I, I never took it for granted. I've always been so grateful to, um, to do that. But I, you know, I am, um, there were some times, you know, when I was in my party and mode and stuff where I, I didn't, uh, I did, you know, I, I wasn't uh, grateful for the, for the experiences and the, and the freedom, you know, the freedom to just go and have this incredible experience the other side of the world, play music, meet people, see people, meet friends. And then when this thing, it really made me think like, wow, man, you know, it's, uh, it, it, it's one of the blessings of this, of this, this pandemic is, you know, you, is you get a minute to sit back and look and have some gratitude for all the badass stuff your life has going on, you know, and, and also, you know, changing direction and discovering other, other ways to be creative or, uh, other ways to do what you love to do. And, and it actually kind of opens up, you know, it opens up doors to, um, to things you never would have thought about had you not been put in that position, you know, so try to stay there. Try, I try to stay in that mode. Um, mm -hmm. it's hard though, you know, it's hard. Everybody's creatures that have it. And I, you know, I love my modos. My girlfriend calls them mo my mode, you know, it's like, mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it, it, uh, it's a trip to think just to, you know, a year ago, we were just like, oh, just go, you know, Mexico city. I mean, my friend Sean's down in Mexico city and it was like such a big decision to like, should I go? Should I get on the plane? How are we going to make, make, be careful? But, but he's working on a festival, a, a virtual festival down there. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, what a trip. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Um, in terms of, of sort of being creative, can you talk a little bit about, you know, aside from putting together this video, um, and I do want to talk about the aesthetic of the video, but can you talk a little bit about what you've been doing as you as you've haven't been able to kind of get out and go? Have you been working on working on writing stuff? Have you been just kind of sitting with what you have? Where where has your head been? creatively in this time? Um, a lot of, I've been doing a lot of, me personally, I've been doing a lot of um, work on getting the, the film out and actually sure. taking it from its, from its basic, you know, video file to turning it into a DVD and a record. And so I lay, now I lay out all the, all the, I don't actually, you know, do, there's a couple of graphics that I don't do, but I lay out all the artwork, put it all together, organize all the files, manufacture DVDs, um, make, and then, you know, put everything together for a record label and get that. Then when all this stuff finally uh, came back in the mail, oh shit, anything? Are you, Are you there? There you go, yeah. sorry. I'm no, no. I want to make sure I got a low power warning there. Um, so I've been working on releasing this thing, you mm -hmm. know, um, that's what I've been doing since May. Um, it's not a full time job. And normally when I'm, when I'm um, home and not playing music, I've been trying, like letting go of, of the day job stuff little by little because my living expenses are, are really minimal, you know. Um, my family's grown and my kids are grown. Everybody's on, you know, so I, I like, I kind of just worry about my own ass, you know, so, uh, but uh, I always had a, a fallback job in a restaurant or a club. Um, I used to work at Pappy and Harriet's up here, great venue. And, uh, and all that stuff, you know, it's all gone. So, you know, it's like started painting houses and, and things like that. Um, uh, Gary's a, 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 a 
a finishing carpenter. He hangs doors and stuff. He, he's real good at that. So that, you know, he's fortunate enough to keep working through through this thing. Uh, but my, my side work and all this work I was doing kind of dried up. So I just had all this time to focus on uh, organizing this thing and kind of self-releasing this movie, um, which is a, you know, it's a big project and, and I've put a lot of time and energy into it. And then when that finally kind of leveled out and, and there was maintenance to do on it, but I, um, I set up my little home studio here. Finally, can I just moved into this house not too long ago um, and never had taken the time to create a space to make music. Um, when lockdown, you're just like, or, you know, virtual lockdown, you're, you know, like, you got to have the space to make music, you know, usually we go up to Gary's house and play in his living room or whatever. And I've always had a space, any house I've ever had has always had a studio space, whether it's the garage or, you know, spare room or whatever. So that's where I'm at now in my little, you know, my little hut out here uh, in the back of our house. And um, it's like, half i'll show you it's half that's that's plastic <laughs> cactus that's where i ship out all our records and shit yep and, and this part is where i make music and write stuff so i started i started working on some songs um uh just i don't want to call it i just started working on material that was focused on more acoustic uh, acoustics, sim the simplicity of, of, of acoustic instruments. Um, and, um, and then uh, I started working on a, a couple little collaborations that had, I had kind of been sitting on for a while with uh, some guys from England, the son, uh, Sons of Alpha Centauri. Oh, yeah. um, sent me a few songs to play on. So I've been doing that and um, me and Gary and Bill got together uh, uh, a couple times to do some just jamming. And uh, the last time we got together, Gary had just gotten some uh, vintage synth equipment and was kind of a new sound for us to mess with. So we recorded that. And, um, but it, you know, it, it's, it's, sometimes it's weird, it's weird with this, this situation you'd think like if you're if you're really inspired uh it's awesome to have all the time to just do and do and if you're if you're always inspired like that but i found like i go through these waves like i'm not always inspired uh and don't always have this like urge to 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 do the creative stuff um and it, it it's like i've i've learned as i've been doing this kind of thing for so long that I have to, it takes work, you know, it takes just like put one foot in front of the other. And then at some point you go, whoa, I'm in it. And I'm, and now there's that, that, that inertia, that momentum, you know, it's kind of intuitively just kind of go, go, go. And, and uh, I'll be out here for hours. But sometimes I just don't, I just don't feel like it. I mean, me and Tony Tornay were talking about the drummer from Fatso Jetson about, mm -hmm. You know, I have all this time to do exactly whatever. And, uh, you know, it just, why is it so hard to just, you know, pick up the guitar and, and write a few tunes or just even practice it or, you know, draw or, you know, all, I, I love to do so many things like that, but I often find myself like a lot of people, like just falling back on it with all this drama in the news, like watching too much news or, yeah. or um, tv stuff or you know f finger fucking facebook or whatever you know it's always some something but um but i've been i've been actually pretty productive so it's i feel pretty good about it <laughs> that's that you know that has to be kind of satisfying that at least there's there's something to get out of it you know and and the 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 movie the love at giant rock um one thing that kind of struck me in watching it was how well the editing and the, the camera work and kind of the, the the details and the rhythm of it, how well that fit with the music. Um, it's very flowing, very sort of these these long 
drone drone shots and everything like that how much that how much that played into the to the songs how, how well the two sides complemented each other can you talk a little bit about the the editing process and kind of the finalizing process for the film uh what was what was your involvement in that and and how do, i guess how do you feel about the finished product obviously you, you put it out so you're like so you like it but yeah well the, i gotta give uh give all that credit to um to sam grant uh was in charge of capturing a couple of those camera angles uh, and then uh, a local photographer, Chris Miller, uh, who um, did all the drone footage uh, and some footage uh, in front of the band, behind the band, uh, um, say, you know, ground footage. And, uh, and another uh, photographer, Caesar Say, Caesar Sid, excuse me, uh, Sam did an amazing thing because he and and again we didn't you know we didn't storyboard this thing or like um plan sh there was there was there was a loose discussion on basically the 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 dream of what the film would feel like and look like there was a discussion of that so there was like you know, we got to get some aerial footage of the area. We've got to get um, some swooping stuff down on the band. We've got to get, uh, keep it, because it's not lights and smoke and on stage with all this, bleh, and cr the crowd, you know, we, we got it, you know, like we ever have that anyway, but, but um, there's got to be movement. And the, and the music, the music, feels uh yawning man's music has always felt kind of cinematic to me like it would work well in in a um, of of it works well visually like it it conjures imagery um it's good driving music like when you're driving it's one of those you know i i have like my whole playlist of driving music and a lot of it is because um it just fits with movement. It fits with scenery passing by and uh, makes that connection, you know, instrumentally also. In, in, so the combination of instrumental music, the, um, the vibe, the feeling in it, the flowing nature of it, the improvisation, um, it, it, this is gonna sound really goofy, but it creates almost like, like when you're, you know, if you're holding a, a, a camera or a cell phone, in this case, most of the shots are, there's a couple of SLR cameras, but a lot of the footage is cell phone. And, um, but it makes you just want to kind of, you know, it's like you know, the old thing with the, when the guy goes into the psychedelic guitar solo and the camera's going, woo, 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 you know. Yes. Spooky, you know? Yes. Um, <laughs> but but it, it, it naturally, if you were going to dance to that music, you would, you would flow with it. And that naturally created these things. And Sam, and those guys, if you, there's a couple shots of the drone uh, that the drone captured of the cameraman, and they're just, they're just moving around the band like this, like really just constantly. Uh, so that, you know, it, it, I think it all played into it. And it was just total talent and luck. The shots, the shots that were captured, the weird light stuff that happened, and the editing what the blessing of the of the editing was that the time crunch was so insane to get it ready for couch lock and rock uh the stone and dusted thing it was like five days so normally if you're gonna make a video for a band or you know mix a record or what it, i mean you would you'd finger you know you'd you'd fuck with that thing for forever until everyone was like okay looks great sounds great oh what about that one shot shows weird oh no this you know there was no time for that so he just he just focused on getting it done in time and he was also at the same time editing concert footage uh from past stone and dusted um uh festival festivals for the couch lock episode so 
you know, he had multitasking on this whole thing. Uh, and it just, it just, it just, it, it is what it is. It just came out wonderful. And, and when I saw it, there was never a time where the band was, okay, we're going to look at it and make creative calls or like, go, ah, I don't like that. Cause that would have, it would have thrown the whole thing off. You know, we, it's better to just keep it just flowing and not stop and go, now can you take that part out or take that? We just, there was basic instruction of what, what we dreamed of seeing. And, uh, and he pulled that, pulled that together beautifully and everyone's shots came out great. And, um, you know, when you're out in an area like that, like whatever you capture in your frame, it's pretty, it's, it's pretty badass. It's not like a club where, oh, there's some table and a, and a speaker in the way or something. It's like, no matter what angle you're at, you're getting some, some great stuff. So the, 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 the magic of that area is really uh, key to the, the thing being beautiful to look at, you know. Uh, real quick, and then I'll, I'll let you go. Do you have any idea of what 2021 might look at for, for you, the planet, Fatso Jetson, Yawning Man, anything else going on? Any idea? Um, yeah, well, there's like, you know, there's, there's the plan, and then there's God's plan over here. <laughs> so, or, you know, whoever's plan. You right, know, everything gets a big asterisk. Right. right. Yeah. But we, we, you know, we had a post, we, Yawning Man had a tour booked with Color Haze in Europe, um, a really, really groovy tour. Uh, and that got postponed to, um, to uh, uh, September, October of 2021. Okay. And it is on the books. It's, you know, it's confirmed, um, but who knows? Oh my God. Um, Can I come? Yeah. <laughs> We'll see, hopefully. And then uh, Fatso Jetson also has um, the same, the same, not not quite as a, a big tour. It's a, sh a shorter tour, but it's with uh, another postponed thing that, and this is supposed to happen in May. Uh, and it's with um, a Greek band called uh, Planet Planet of Zeus. Oh yeah, sure. So that was a postponed two times. And then finally, um, a booking agent uh, has been working on it uh, diligently. Um, but, you know, everybody discussed like, okay, yes, but, and that's the, uh, in the States and Canada. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah, I remember that I was presenting stuff, that tour. Right. At <laughs> one point, yeah. Same, same thing. And then, um, Young Man's uh, planning a new record. Uh, obviously, you know, we just released this, but we're planning a studio recording. Uh, and um, and Fatso Jetson is preparing to do a, a, a unique series a project, a split. Um, we're just talking about it with uh, the guys from Desert Records in uh, New Mexico. Um, so there's stuff, it, it's a split, a unique little uh, um, uh, release. So I think you've covered that yeah, before. Yeah, yeah. Brad, uh, so, uh, Lord Buffalo and another word, yeah. Lord Fe yeah, Lord Buffalo. Yes. Hang on a second. I'm embarrassed to not be able to pull this out of my head. This Du, 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 du. Legends of the Desert, Lord Buffalo and Pale Horse, Pale Rider, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's serious. That's cool. Um, so it's all it's all stuff that I am, you know, I'm complete acceptance that it probably I mean the touring stuff will probably not happen, but yeah. but we'll see. You know, it'd be be awesome and and uh, and then you know um We'll figure out something else groovy to do if if uh, if that stuff doesn't happen. So, oh, so yeah, we're we're excited. We're excited and stoked. There's it seems like there's some there's some uh, help on the way with vaccines and all these things. And if everybody can can manage to stay well uh, till that happens, I think we'll be in 
okay shape. So Here's thanks. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, no, thank you, Mario. I appreciate it. I'm going to stop recording. Uh, okay. Again.